It's convenient that like every time we have like a new target or palace, like we actually learn about them in school. Like it's always gonna be someone that you're just hearing about. Underground mafia boss, uh, who's like, like, like operating out of here. <laughs> How did he just, he just called the, the, the next boss after this? What? prediction was that? That was incredible! Hello everyone, my name is Jack and today I'll be having a look at RT Games content, specifically his playthrough of Persona 5 Royal. Now I am your Persona 5 professional. <laughs> Those of you who have watched me before know how loose that word is. Just bear with me here. <laughs> So my credentials to actually talk about this game here, I'm the guy who managed to beat this game without actually attacking at all. I then decided that was too easy and decided to take no damage during it. I also followed that up with an SMT5 version of that run. So I'm very familiar with Mega Ten and I know all the mechanics in it. For the most part anyway, I still can't pronounce any of the names. <laughs> now I love RT's game content. I should like preface all of this with that. He's so much fun and entertaining that I've been a long time viewer of his for ages, but now he's playing a game that I know about and I'm gonna critique the living hell out of this. <laughs> Which might be a little unfounded, I mean like this isn't a challenge run or anything, this is just a man playing a game, but I thought it'd be fun just to talk about some of the things he does, and also just some of the mechanics in this game that people are a bit unfamiliar with and how you can improve your gameplay if you're considering doing something crazy with this, I don't know. <laughs> The, the point being, I've got so much knowledge of this game, I need to just tell someone. Regardless, I know a lot of the mechanics in this and I'll be critiquing uh, his Matarame playthrough of it. I think that's a fair enough standpoint to begin with, just because Kaneshiro, he's learning all the mechanics there, he gets a pass, everyone else does. But I want to talk about Matarame and we'll see how good he does. The fifth party member. It's the Reddit admin, of course. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we go back to the present size like... You must have had a Redditor on your side. <laughs> so I, I suppose we should stop there and talk about Mishima's Confidant for a second. Mishima's Confidant is fine, in my opinion. I don't think it's the best thing in the world. Obviously, the uh, the first ability that you get automatically is really good. We want uh, our backup members to earn XP. Um, but there's two problems with him. First of all, it's only XP. And in this game, Persona 5 Royal, it's generally quite easy to keep everyone at the same level. At most, you'll be out by four or five. The second thing is is that his confidant is locked behind mementos progression. So if you're not doing side quests and mementos, you just don't level them up. Which quite frankly, there are better confidants to have in this game in my opinion. You've got sun, you've got strength, you've got all of your party members pretty much, uh, fortune as well. Mishim is fine, it's, it's a real quality of life thing when it comes to him, if you just want to make sure that everyone's gonna, you know, get the most XP, but quite frankly, it's not really a major concern in this game. We're gonna prioritize Ryuji, That's I think. Yes, yes, hang on, we're gonna prioritize Ryuji. Exactly, that's exactly what we want to hear. Ryuji's persona, it's just good quality of life. So yeah, um, prioritizing Ryuji is definitely a good idea. Ryuji is definitely one of the strongest characters in the game. I'm a big fan of him personally. Some people are more fans of Yusuke as their physical damage dealer, but he's such a bruiser. Like everything in his kit is just kind of amazing. Now it's changed from uh, the normal game to the Royal, right? Some of his abilities aren't as powerful as they were in there, but they are still pretty good. One of the things you should do for all the party members that you think you're gonna use is get them up to rank six. Get Harrison recovery on all of them. Status effects just won't be an issue anymore. And that frees up your healers to be able to uh, have some more attacking skills on them. Generally, we don't want our healers to have to uh, you know, fix up our characters ailment wise on their turns. So having Harrison recovery on your party with everyone is really good and that means getting him to rank 6 is pretty crucial. Ryuji however, bring him up to rank 7. Rank 7 you unlock insta kill, probably, am I going to say best, best ability, best confident ability? Yeah, I think I am. It's mainly because I'm a lazy bastard though. <laughs> uh, insta kill in this game essentially makes it so that you can avoid doing some combat encounters and just get golden XP and personas for free. It, they're great. Insta-kill is amazing in this game, and uh, later on when you have to do Ah, uh, spoilers. Mm, I'm gonna redo that, yeah. <laughs> later on in the game when there are some required areas <laughs> for you to complete, insta-kill just makes those really easy. Especially if you're in even mementos, just going around, you know, clearing up the quest list and everything, insta-kill is awesome. It's such a time save. So yes, Getting Ryuji uh, as far as you can early on is super good, and this is what I do in all of my runs. Get him maxed out immediately. Yes, go to McDonald's! Yes, he's doing it as well, good. Big Bang Burger is definitely the right place to go when you're at this rank of the game. So when you get to rank two, three, and four in the stats that it requires, you can get to the next level of Big Bang Burger, and that just increases your stats across the board. That's one of the most efficient ways to increase them. Actually, let's, uh, let's pause it here, by the way. Getting rank two and everything by month five, I mean, 
hang on, what month is that actually in like real life? May. Um, <laughs> pretty good. He's on a good pace for all this. Now it does get harder to actually level these up the further you go. So going from one to two is nowhere near going from four to five. It, it's, it gets really hard later on. You need to actually specialize for it a lot. Um, but getting rank two and everything at this point of the game, yeah, he's on pretty good pace. You could, I think I've been one higher, like I've had a three and something if you play it correctly. Um, but getting to and everything, yeah, super decent. He's on the right track to just max out everything in this playthrough right now. Can we just keep him as like a bus now? So like when we come up against the next like uh, palace mastermind, like Morgana just runs them over. <laughs> Holy shit, look out! <laughs> and he's just like doing like 120 miles per hour. Like he's actually he's actually not too far off one of the attacks you unlock later in this game. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, some of these fights and mementos, yeah, I've actually had that problem before where it's like, there's not really any content here, we've just hit them to the ground, and we all attack them, and then we won. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too surprised that they've really just skipped through that immediately, because some of these fights are just that. And that, that thing, that's just Persona, right? The whole idea is that we want to conserve our SP and we want to finish these fights quickly, especially if we're trying to do palaces in one day. It'll be interesting to see if he actually manages to do the Matarami one in one day. Post Jack here. What I said was completely wrong. Matarami's palace is impossible to complete in one day. You need a minimum of three. Still, it'll be interesting to see if he does that. It certainly becomes easier later on uh, to to do them all in one day. Uh, I think definitely Kanashira is the worst to get through, just because SP is such a challenge. It was worse in the original game, however, uh, the royal version has the uh, the will seeds in it now, so you can restore a bit of it back. And just generally, SP is easier to come by for the most part. But yeah, a lot of this game is just going to be you hit weaknesses, you all out attack them because all out attack is just a it's a free hit. You're going to act on it unless there's a very good reason as to why you can. Actually, no, I'll, I'll bring this up later on. But you are able to in this game not do the all out attack and just attack them again and, and hit them down. And there are there are some situations in which you are going to want to do that. There are some abilities that uh, increase damage if the target is not, which means what you do is you hit their weakness, you get the prompt for the all out attack, but you don't do it. Uh, you instead just uh, you know take the one more and, and don't do anything with the turn. And that sometimes deals more damage than the all out attack itself. Now, the only reason you do that is because if you have an ability that increases damage when they're knocked down already, you could use that. Or if SP isn't really a concern. Generally, for the most part, if you hit them again with the weakness while they're knocked, you will end up doing more damage than the all-out attack itself. Unless you've got something else in play there. Um, you could have Futaba boosting you and everything. I think if you rank up her, you can get some really good all-out attacks. Uh, there are one or two abilities... That increase all attack effectiveness? I might be making that up there. I'm fairly certain there in the game. Um, but yeah, for the most part, you are going to all attack unless you've got a good reason not to. And there, there are a few. Oh, actually the best addition in Royal. Makes Memento so much better to go through this guy. Jose has pretty good things all around. I mean, um, the best thing about Jose is definitely the stamps you can redeem with him, and the first thing that you should be doing with those stamps is boosting up items immediately. It makes your Mementos trips so much more profitable boosting items over uh, money or XP. So that's what I always do in my gameplay, uh, boost items up first, and Jose is awesome for that. He actually is the best addition in this game. Move over third semester, move over you know new abilities and everything. This man makes the game so much more playable and bearable, especially in mementos later on. Oh, goodness. Study, please, God, study. But what if it's raining tomorrow and the study is more efficient then? I'll train. I, I agree with that statement completely. Uh, it's really annoying the fact that you don't know the weather forecast in this game. If you did know it, it would be awesome. Persona 4 had that mechanic where you knew what the weather was going to be like in advance. You got like the next week. And it was just because in that game, the infiltration is tied to the weather. Like if it's raining a few days, that's when that's basically your, your time to go and finish up what you're doing and everything. But the fact you don't have a weather forecast in this game, very annoying because you need to be able to plan things. Not only is studying better, um, but the bathhouse improves, I'm pretty certain. Yeah. It's very annoying. And, and also, as another thing, you don't really need to study in this game to boost up your knowledge. Books are definitely the way to go, in my opinion. You should always, always if you can, uh, especially later on when you get them really quicker and everything, you should be doing books, DVDs, games, and movies in this all the time. They are more efficient ways to boost up your stats than doing the activities generally. So yeah, that's one of the things you want to do actually in this game is to uh, maximize the rate at which you're gathering stats. You want to get your hands on the DVD stuff 
immediately, just because that gives you a boost every time you interact with it. Um, and you, and with books, you get free time slots anyway to, in order to do those. One of the reasons why you want to max out Kawakami as well, or at least get her going as soon as possible. So for today, I'm heading to the beef bowl shop. What have you worked part time at the beef bowl mm, shop? Yeah, Sun Confidant. Maybe second best in the game. I can say I'm a big fan of Ryuji's one, but kind of amazing once more. This is one of the ones where it's actually really hidden as well to get him. You have to go to the beef bowl shop, but the thing is you have to do it for like two nights, right? And many people go to the beef bowl shop and work and they're like, oh, he's not there. Like, you know, maybe I've done something wrong and everything. And they completely forget about him. No, you have to work there um, two nights, I believe. And then you unlock him and you can uh, upgrade his confidant. And his confidant, one of the best in the game. Just, just straight up. With Ryuji, you max them out immediately because at level 10, you can recruit personas even if they're above your level, which just makes the end game so much easier in terms of uh, cl uh, cleaning up the compendium and everything. And you can get some really busted stuff quite early on. Now, this only works with recruiting persona of a high level. Later on, you can unlock fusing persona of a high level, but you need to do uh, the twins confidant for that. Yeah, and the other thing is I'm confident, diplomacy. One of the best negotiation skills in the game. It's just so good. You can get so much more money out of your negotiations uh, and items as well. There are some glitches you can do later on, actually, that allow you to get infinite money if you abuse this. Essentially, third palace, you can abuse High Pixie. Um, High Pixie can't actually damage you. They can only sleep you. And so what you do is you continuously knock them down uh, with your attacks, which you should have at that point. You can infinitely do them. Um, and you'll be able to keep knocking her down, keep asking her for money, and you'll push her for more and more money using diplomacy and everything. So they don't actually run away when you are them. You push them for more and more, eventually they'll give up and they'll say, no, I'll just continue fighting and everything. Then you knock them down again, keep asking them for more and more money, and you can actually get, I think I've got like 300,000 off this in half an hour. Uh, and even if you're not doing that, that bug, it's still just an amazing ability to have in the game, including his whole set. Mind control, manipulation, diplomacy, fundraising, and his capstone one, the one that allows you to recruit uh, anyone from any level. All of them are amazing. They're all good. You know how that's like a, a, a genre of that, like that, because that is a genre of like manga and anime, where it's like trapped in this world, but I have like a gaming PC, or I'm trapped. Oh in yeah, a what's that genre lab, called? It's like a, it's like a bunch. It's like there's a category of anime where it's like people from the real world who are taken or transported into a fantasy world, and all of a sudden they're the main character and everyone loves them. I, you know what I'm talking about. What's it called? My brother would know. Hang on, hold the phone. Isekai, apparently. I've never heard of that before. Annoyingly in this game, um, your performance on the exams are tied to not only your actual, like how you answer the questions, but what your knowledge that is as well. So even if you get them all right, a knowledge of two doesn't mean you're getting anything out of this, unfortunately, which is annoying. You get some unique rewards if you place in uh, higher up in the exams. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how he does here. I imagine he's gonna get everything correct. That probably puts him above class average, that'll be the prompt that he gets. If you do better than that, I'm pretty sure Sojiro will, will hand you some stuff. But but I don't blame him here, obviously, uh, because getting knowledge up to three for this exam, you, you basically just have to focus it. <laughs> there's um, there's no way you're gonna get more than that, essentially. I know my anime, because Inception was inspired by an anime. It's more accurate to call this a paprika it's... game. <laughs> God, I, I, I didn't even mean that. that that's just in my room. <laughs> I just like Christopher Nolan, man. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so just straight up a rank two. We should mention Maruki's confidant. The third best in the game. He like he's just like Arte's just knocking out all the good confidants straight away. So just as a, a side note, Maruki's confidant, all of them are good, all the abilities he gets. Um detox, obviously. I mentioned before how hey, you want to make sure that on your turns you're not actually wasting them having to cure ailments. Detox and detox DX, which you unlock later on, helps in that so much. Essentially, it just means that Joker is never gonna be affected by anything ever. And you don't want to lose Joker's turn. If you lose Joker's turn, your fight's gonna go bad. <laughs> That's just the truth. Uh, not only that, but you can also get a chance to get uh, Charge and Concentrate for free, which is stupidly good. Maruki just makes everything better. And on top of that, you get increases to your max SP. You just want to do Maruki immediately the moment you get him, essentially. I was going to say, all of these choices so far for Confidence, really solid. And I'm hoping that he pushes Maruki alongside Ryuji at the same time. Uh, you want to get those guys done immediately, because they are just amazing. Let's go to bed. Uh, uh, why? Uh, 
One thing we can mention right here, whenever Morgana is laying down Persona 5 Royal, that means you can't actually leave the room. You're required to uh, basically go to sleep straight away. So it does, um, if, if you can notice that, it does mean you're gonna, you know, stop wasting time trying to leave and then Morgana trying to tell you off constantly. It's one of the most annoying things about this game, the fact that you're locked into your bedroom half the time. That, and another thing here, Houseplant. I'm not quite sure if he's actually been doing it or not. I haven't watched the previous stream, so unfortunately I don't know. But with the houseplant here, if you do have fertilizer, and it depends on the type of fertilizer that you can get from the shops, there's a few places you can buy it from, you can get free kindness increases. Now, kindness is probably the hardest stat in the game to level up. There isn't too many places where you can get it. Uh, the houseplant is definitely the easiest one. It doesn't require a time slot or anything. You get three points every... Uh, one or two weeks. I can't remember exactly the time frame on it, but you want to be doing houseplant as well to boost up your kindness. Um, just it's just so useful. Probably like stealing people's paintings or something. Called it immediately. <laughs> good, good job. It's convenient that like every time we have like a new target or palace, like we actually learn about them in school. Like it's mm. always going to be someone that you're just hearing about. Underground mafia boss. Uh, who's like 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 operating out of here. He just, he just called the, the, the next boss after this. What prediction was that? That was incredible. We should mention Sojiro Confidant. Uh, Sojiro's Confidant essentially gives you access to a bunch of SP healing items. Now that does sound great initially, but quite frankly, you don't really need them. Uh, making SP items is one of your time slots, which is what you unlock by doing Sojiro's Confidant. It's fine. It's not great, however. Like, you, you don't want to be wasting those time slots on making those items. Uh, the only reason why you would do Sojiro's Confident is if you're going to do Kawakami's later on as well. Because one of the Kawakami's things is that you can get her to make the coffee and curry for you, right? And you can get her to, to make SP items and you can save the time slots. So that's kind of the only reason why you would do Sojiro's uh, Confident. But uh, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to do this and waste time slots on it yourself. So you can still get Sajiro done, of course, and I recommend you do get him done. But he shouldn't be our top priority by any means. Uh, yeah, uh, Maruki is definitely one of the ones you want to get finished earlier rather than later. There are some confidence in this game that are locked because of time. Uh, Maruki is one of them. You want to get him maxed out as soon as possible. So that's my one bit of advice if you are watching this, uh, RT. Clean up Maruki now. And plus, his benefits are, are so good. I mean, you'd want them as early as possible as well. The effect of charge and concentrate at the start of a battle. That seems good. I don't know what charge and concentrate it's are. Amazingly it's amazingly good. Though. Charge and concentrate in Royal, double your damage and then some. I think it's a two and a half times multiplier on any hit. You can one shot basically anything with charge and concentrate as long as they don't really resist it. Super good. Um, essentially, the the kind of strategy you want to do in this game is you want to uh, you want to buff yourself completely, uh, charge and concentrate, and then do an attack on the uh, enemy turn. You just get more effectiveness out of it. And there are some persona traits later on that will make it so that charge and concentrate is actually more effective. Um, and you also unlock abilities that mean that other party members can apply charge and concentrate onto other people. Generally, it's a uh, a solo thing, uh, but you can get that later on, and that just makes it so much better. And even uh, with flow. Having the chance that, that just happens straight away, super useful. It's all about turn economy, uh, Persona. So whenever you get an ability that uh, influences the turn economy in your favor, you're better off for it. That's why uh, Harrison Recovery is so good, why Detox is so good, Flow is so good. Anything that makes your turns more effective and gets more value out of them is really nice. And that's why later on, Hifumi is going to be a big one. Okay, infiltrate the palace. Okay, so we started Going this on 521. I think I think that's a that's a fair time to start this. What he could have done is hold off on signing this palace a little bit longer and get Ryuji leveled up to level six or seven. I think that would have probably been the better play to do. But he didn't know this in hindsight, so I, this is fair enough. Absolutely, just start it, go ahead. You don't know how long these palaces are going to take anyway, so you might as well get in early. Um, that being said, Madarama, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to take what I said just back. Madarama's palace does have a bit where you have to, you're forcibly kicked out of mementos and then have to get back into it. So it depends on what he does in between that. Um, but yeah, yeah, he, he can start the palace, I guess. Oh, they're weak to gun, aren't they? Good prediction. Uh, yeah, anything with anything that's kind of pixie in this game has wings, looks weaker. Generally, guns your best bet. Um, a lot of this game is about predicting weaknesses, even if you don't know them. So yeah, weak to gun in this case. Uh, you just got to kind of look at the the posture and the design of the persona. Obviously, if you're looking at Jack Frost, he's blue, he's he's white. He he looks like a nice type. You throw fire at him with this. 
it's got wings and it's weak, probably, uh, you know, probably shoot him with a gun. Angel, it looks holy, probably curse attacks, right? It, there's a lot of uh, intuition when, when it comes to Persona especially. SMT5, less so. <laughs> the game likes to pull gotchas on them. Um, but in this game, definitely, you can kind of intuition more than anything what their weaknesses actually are. All right, harder fight though. Good ambush to start with. Oh, bringer of mist. Shin, I don't know how to pronounce this one. Good persona. You want to get this guy straight away, as I'm sure is about to find Watch out. Him. Look at this guy. He's so cool. Yep. Uh, this dude, possibly the best demon uh, in this palace, best persona you can get. He just blocks physical and gun, and you have no idea how effective that is. Now, I will put a caveat on that. The boss for this, uh, for this palace doesn't really mean anything against it, unfortunately, but, but blocking physical and gun, super useful. Possibly the best thing you can get in this game is something to do with resisting physical. Uh, definitely repel and drain physical, the most powerful ones, but just stopping physical attacks from hurting you, I think a good 50% of the attacks just won't touch you if that's the case. Morgana is enraged. Yeah, so enrage lowers your defense a lot. It does lo it does increase your attack, and I'm fairly certain it lowers your accuracy. Um, but uh, one of the tricks that the AI does in this game is that if you're versing a persona with um, a, a physical nullification, right, they'll generally give you enrage because that means you lose control of your characters, uh, and they can pretty much be immediately killed. So, uh, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why you want Harrison recovery. You want those ailment healing skills that activate automatically without you doing anything to stop situations like this happening. Yeah, all that attack probably wasn't the best play there. Good technical though. Yeah, he iced into sleep. So <laughs> he's learning the power of technicals in this game. Um, later on, technicals are definitely better than weaknesses in my opinion. Uh, now there is a bit of hidden mechanic behind that right, and you can level up your technicals later on, which is definitely something you should be doing. Getting max rag technicals, it makes them knock down enemies. You can do so much more damage and it's definitely guaranteed. Uh, there are a lot of enemies in this game that will resist, you know, types of magic and everything. They actually won't have any weaknesses at all. So being able to do technicals is actually a better way of knocking people down. It's way more guaranteed and you can get some ludicrous damage if you play your cards right. There are a lot of abilities in this game that actually increase damage if the target is sleeping, for instance. I think there's a, a physical attack that does that. It might be an Arsene thing. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, but what you're able to do is you can use that physical attack that increases the, the, the uh, attack damage when they're sleeping, but you also get the technical effect as well. And if you max out your technical damage oh you can just kill them it's stupid good please wait get the brick i'm counting on you mona please. hang on that wasn't quite the sound effect i wanted hang on <laughs> i'm counting on you mona <laughs> okay we're in gang oh oh i haven't actually seen his personas yet the nuke skill on jack frost is incredible and you and to have that this early on good job um, I'm hoping he's managed to get a Psy as well, because there actually are some new Psy weaknesses you can exploit in this area, and Rakunda, very good also. That's a very good Jack Frost. Oh, he's using DLC Persona, that's obvious. Yeah, look, okay, I don't, I can't really talk here because my challenge runs involve DLC Persona as well, even though there were different rule sets and everything. The DLC Persona uh, that you get with Royal automatically, um, they are very good. Way better than what they were in the original game, especially with their traits and everything as well. Now, Orpheus does have the trait where basically you can survive four lethal attacks if you play your cards right. Um, and he's going to have some really good fire skills and Neo Cadenza, I think. So, yeah, very, very powerful. Good to see him using it. I don't know like whether or not he cares about the fact that these are DLC Persona and they are inherently going to be a lot more powerful. But um, just from a, a, what he could have at this point, Orpheus is very good. Okay, Morgana, here we go. Initiate the plan. Very good. <laughs> yeah, so we've unlocked Yusuke. He gets kicked out with Morgana with this fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, it is rather annoying. It'll be interesting to see if he keeps Morgana in his party because Morgana is definitely the best healer in the game. Doesn't make him the best healing party member. I think Makoto later on is a better party member overall just because she's a bit more versatile and can basically do the same job. Um, but Yusuke is a very good powerful attacker. You either generally have Yusuke or um, Ryuji in your party. I don't know, it, again, it's pre preference. I prefer Ryuji, Yusuke is definitely able to replace him, and it really depends on the composition you're going for. Um, Yusuke is very powerful though, he unlocks some crazy stuff later on. Yeah, so I'm imagining, from the rate at which 
your RT is going through the confidence right now. I'm imagining he's actually got a chariot persona in his stock, and you should absolutely all the time have the same arcana as the person you're doing the confidant with. It doubles the points you get from uh, doing these events, and it looks like he's been doing that considering the rate at which he's progressing through this. So it's good to see it. Oh, Sanderson, you did your best out there today. <laughs> Did we not even get a confidant with him yet? No, yeah, you don't get your confidant with him until you do it, I think, the second time, unfortunately. And again, that's the reason why a lot of people miss him as a confidant, even though he's so good. It's just because it's really obscure how you get him. So yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain you have to attend this again or work at the, the beef shop. One, one of the two. Um, but you, you keep working on him, you get him, and he's, he's worth all the effort, honestly. Huh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can't really fault him for that because I think everyone does it, but if you use this Thief Vision here, it's really easy to get past this bit because you can really easily um, see them. Come on, Thief Vision it. Thief Vision, yes! <laughs> okay, it should be mentioned, if um, in this game, if you start sprinting, you'll just immediately do whatever action that comes up as the prompt. If you sprint through those things, that wouldn't have happened. Right. Archangel. Good grab, uh, definitely. A light skills at this early in the game and a hit all nuke and a hit all psych. That's really good. That's a good skill to have. The trait doesn't make too much sense in my opinion. Uh, and when he gets rebellion, that's not gonna be particularly useful uh, as well. But that's just a really solid persona. The only thing I'd worry about is the fact that it's got a curse weakness. Um, this early in the game, not too big of a deal. Not too many demons actually have curse insta-kills. Um, but if they do land, he's just dead <laughs> immediately. Which is why if you got uh, Ryuji with Endure, uh, not Endure, sorry, the, um, the self-sacrifice one, um, along with Endure, I guess, uh, that would make this even better. Orpheus, yep. Uh, Orpheus, Neo Cadenza, busted. Probably the best. Well, one of the best early DLC abilities, definitely. Neo Condenser is a heat riser for your entire party, and it heals you as well. It's busted. You just want to pop this every single fight, because it's got basically no SP cost. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, th there's a reason why, generally, if you're going to play this game normally, you don't use DLC personas, because you've got stuff like this coming out, and Neo Condenser is one of those abilities where it's like... I, I don't know, I went on a rant about it once in one of my older videos, and basically, heat riser for your whole party, and it heals you at that level, at that SP cost, is busted. You use it every single time. Crystal of Vanity. Oh, Nullifies yeah. Nullifies weak. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm glad we got straight into this. Crystal Vanity is actually one of the best, uh, just, just best accessories in the game. Nullifying weakness is stupidly powerful. What this means is if you put on Joker, you don't have to worry about getting knocked down ever again from weaknesses. Uh, you can have Persona that have uh, that are generally horrible, right? Because there are some Persona that you just never use. I'm thinking about ones that are weak to physical and gun skills, mainly physical, right? You just wouldn't touch them because half the enemies in this game are just going to attack you normally, right? If you have Crystal Vanity, you get to use them. And sometimes they have some really powerful stuff. This is one of those ones you just chuck on Joker and you never worry about getting uh, weaknesses again. And this is really good. If you're doing a, a merciless run of this game, you need this. You need this. Weaknesses and Merciless do three times the damage. You want to put this on uh, Joker immediately. I can craft this guy. Oh, yes. Catch him. Yes. Make him. Make him now. Just do it. <laughs> it's not. It's not particularly useful for this boss fight coming up. But this dude can carry you through next palace easily. Yeah, this is one of those Persona where if you have the correct fusion materials to put on them, you can just have it be a utility kind of thing. And what I mean by that is like a utility based Persona is you just give them a bunch of random magic skills. So no matter what situation you're in, they're gonna have something that can knock down the enemy. Now, generally you make them all single hit target skills. So just in case someone's reflecting or blocking something, you're not actually gonna take damage from it. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. Uh, that's more of a later on thing, I guess. But having a utility Persona like this they can just pull out anything has really good uh, affinities which means if you have to pull them out and there are going to be situations where you're panicking and you, you know you just need to knock them and finish the fight now pulling this guy out i mean you're nullifying so many things you're not going to die from it and you've got endure on him <laughs> like amazing Additional point. oh shit yeah, um, so that's one of the things. Sometimes Morgana hands you an additional point whenever you're crafting stuff. It is completely random if it happens or not. You can save scum for it, and I know that if you're going to max this game completely, look, it's not necessary to do it just because you do have more free time in uh, the royal version of this game, but in the normal game, I'm pretty sure you had to save scum this in order to get 100% playthrough on your first try. Uh, so yeah, th this can just happen randomly. It's not anything I would stress about too much to the one point, personally. Amazing, Mona. 
Good man around me, the piece is gone. Ready the brick! <laughs> <laughs> No. This brick bit is the gift is the gift that keeps on giving. Oh nice. What's going on here? <laughs> Try hit him off. Yeah, bad idea in this fight. Oh, oh I take that back! Yeah, so Skull's been hit with the unique for this fight. He managed to get through that quite easily. Health's a little low, but otherwise he's good. This shouldn't be too bad for him. If you have um, hit all light attacks. Like, okay, if you have Shining Arrows, you just win this fight right here. Um, but... We'll see. If he pulls out the hit all light, he could really easily clean this. Or he can just baton pass and clean it like that. We'll see what he does. Good call. Won't hit weaknesses, but, I mean, just damage them all. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, they, um, yeah. Use single targets in this fight. Because otherwise that happens. And then pass it to Joker. Yeah, okay, that's a maps. It would have been a fair play there. What he could have done is instead hand it to Yusuke for the final pass, and then just do vicious strike. That probably would have killed them all, just because of his strength. It's it's really good. He'll get the bonus from it as well. Um, no, yeah, fair play. No, this is a technical maps right oh, good job. Pass it to and the then giant, giant slice. slice. Yes. See, look at that. Baton pass and the giant slice, 323 damage, and that was only one baton pass. If you get all four going, easily 500. That was that was actually incredible. He killed it. So in terms of uh, summing it up there and ranking the overall performance, it's definitely an A from me. He's kind of killed it. Um, everything that he's doing right now is completely by the book. There's no obvious mistakes that I can fault. There's just some personal choices and preferences that I would say. His confidant choice is solid. His personas that he's rocking are very good. He seems to have a very nice understanding of everything that he's doing. Um, I'm going to say moving forward, uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does with the new accessories and the new mechanics that come out later and on into play. Um, I will definitely be having a look at how he progresses through this. I think the, the real thing is going to be is how does he pick up the technical and the baton pass stuff and how does he go about ranking that up and if he does that well and plays that correctly he's going to have no issue moving forward. I would say um, the DLC persona are definitely going to be like the most powerful thing and if he does get them he's going to have a lot of an easier time uh, moving on and it'll be interesting to see how his strength confidant develops. I think a lot of people definitely ignore that and you really shouldn't if you want to get through this game uh, nice and easy. You can unlock some pretty good stuff there but overall very good he he's doing an amazing job of this so my uh absolute you know congratulations to him he's killing it he can he can he can keep on doing what he's doing the only recommendations i have there is just the persona choice and definitely making sure that those traits are going to be connected with his skills that he's going to be picking up later on um the, the fact is though he doesn't have that hindsight so th i mean that's fine of course it is but overall very good well done a, a complete round of applause <laughs> A big thank you to the Patreons, Albert Pammer, Luke78776, and Yoba.